G'day, I'm Adam. And I'm Kira. We're travelling Australia with our Kelpie dog, Reef. Can't wait to take you guys along for the ride. Make sure you like and subscribe to follow along round and about. Point Brown, what a ripper spot. Definitely worth putting it on the bucket list. That's what you have to do. Check this guy out. Live the dream. Ah, go get us some dinner. I'm doing it. All right, so we're on the hunt. We have an echidna in the wild. This dude is making laps. Check this. Oh, how sick is this? Look at this little guy. How cool. So these are these little footprints. That is awesome. So Adam bought this little Duvalaki thingy when we crossed the border. Um, it just helps with the tyres going up and down. <laughs> I'll put in the video of it because I don't know what it does. But anyway, enjoy. Push that all the way in. So you can't go anymore. Then bring the nut all the way to the back. Add to the back of it. And then you got this little... So the nut goes in between that tool locks it in. Just like that. Just lock it back in. We loved our time here at Point Brown. We definitely recommend it as somewhere to kick back and relax. from Speeds Point. So we're south of Streaky Bay. Yeah. So we woke up at Point Brown. We'd stayed there two nights in two different spots. So we got to yeah. see. Yeah, east and the west side of the little 
cape <laughs> session. Bit of a stitch up because we thought we'd shift spots after another group left because um, theirs looked good and had a nice view as well on the other side. I disagreed, but anyway. We thought we'd get the sunset. Oh, yeah. But it was absolutely stitch up because the sunset ended up being like, like what we thought south. was south. Yeah. It was crazy. So, anyway, we got no sunset. <laughs> <laughs> So we moved for nothing, but anyway. Plus, we had an awesome cliff spot, which was probably what, maybe 15 metres up? Yeah. It was awesome. Anyway, but so. Still a nice spot where we ended up. Two great spots. Yeah. Um, and then. I highly recommend going. If you're going to go, let your tyres down. Mm, it pretty makes bumpy. The ride super enjoyable. Um, it's not very boggy, but just heaps of ruts mm. the whole way. But there is like the spot at the top where if you've got two wheel drive, like we saw a bus yeah. and a motorhome up the top. So you can go there, it's just limited options if you've only got two wheel drive. But like, yeah, it wasn't super boggy. No, just it's rocky. Little, yeah, it's a bit harder with the caravan. And corrugations. You, you had a two wheel drive. Yeah. But anyway, so um, we left Point Brown um, and dropped into streaky bay um so we they're pretty rv friendly town so there was the dump point the water we could get for free as well so we did that um then we popped into the iga to get some dog food and stuff and it's a pretty cool little coastal town yeah, yeah. it's weird it's like you feel like you're in the outback still because there's all these like federation style homes and everything's really dry and there's all the wheat farms or i assume it's wheat um, but crop farms anyway, um, and the big silos, but then you've got the beach right there as well. So it's like a weird juxtaposition of that. But um, yeah, nice town. Definitely um, worth checking out the, the big shark. That's yeah. Like a tribute to it. So at the Shell Roadhouse, like yeah. you go for fuel and you just walk inside and there's like an area where you go down the hallway to the toilets and it opens up to this big room and they've got a replica of a big great white shark. Uh, 5.2 or 3 meter shark. I can't remember. It was massive. The kid was 21 when he caught it and it's, yeah, insane. Yeah. I mean, it took about five hours for him to reel it in, but. Scary yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool just to read up. They've got like a news article about the guy as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's worth a read. But yeah, worth looking at just for the scale of it. Because I've seen it on videos before, but then yeah, walking in in person, I was just like, well, yeah. this is. Massive, could you imagine swimming next to this we'll thing? We'll throw up some photos of it. Yeah, video, but yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we scooted on through. It was sort of getting long in the teeth of the day. We didn't want to drive too far and then not have somewhere to park up for the night. So we decided, because it's going to get warmer tomorrow, to do all the rock pools and stuff around here. So, yeah, we've picked Speeds Point. It's dead. We're the only ones here. It's only mind. small. It's only just... Three yeah, three-ish. Um, there's probably a handful of sites here if you've got caravans, more if you're like in a swag or something. Yeah. But yeah, and it's just 10 bucks per vehicle per night. So nice and cheap little campground around here. Um, and yeah, good base to do like the loop tracks for like the coastal drive and do snorkeling and rock fishing and all sorts of stuff. So we'll get onto that tomorrow. And keep going around, making our way down to Port Lincoln.
Welcome to the credits. We got some. <laughs> Sorry. So we got some lichen covered rocks. So they're all like orange. Yeah. And wicked rock pools and wicked surf. It's very good. Shame there's not a couple of guys out there that wouldn't feel so shark bait. But... <laughs> Murphy's Haystack is a great spot to call in and check out. The flared shape of the rocks is caused by the intense weathering. Special thanks to the owner who has allowed the public to access these incredible granite formations for a small donation. Not only that, he has provided a toilet and a camp area for just $10 a night if you need to stay. But we decided to keep on trucking. We found a nice quiet rest area just outside of Port Kenny that we pulled into for the night. We got ourselves all set up and then I stood on a buried spike that some muppet had planted. Burying shanks out at the freaking rest areas to get the tourists. Yeah, the comments, what do you think that was for? Bloody dangerous. Drive over that. Just gonna have another look up and down here. Yeah. I just can't believe that didn't get down. We were just lucky. My tyre's there. Yeah, lucky, lucky. Just the angle you came in at. Ready to go explore a cave? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Wool Shed Cave. Are you going in the cave? Yeah, do you want to go? So that used to be up there. A snake. What? There's a snake here. Come. Where? Oh, that thing. That's tiny. The ones I saw were way bigger than that. It's still a snake. <laughs> That's like a worm. It's 
long as it's not quick like that one on the beach. I don't know if it's even dead. Just leave it. It's probably just chilling. I'm just wondering if it's dead. But right. look at all these sticks here. Right. Yeah, you gotta keep your eyes peeled. I think he's alive. So. He's just chilling while we go past. Saved your life reef. The Woolshed Cave is just one section of this coast that you can explore by foot. Unfortunately, the tide was coming in, so we had to move on, but there's plenty more to explore. We've just cruised on down to Ellison and they've got this ocean drive with all these sculptures so I'm making Adam stop at every one. Lovers, look out, boy! Brunch. <laughs> if you don't get the chance to check out the Bunda Cliffs, this certainly makes a good alternative. So we've just arrived at Greenlee Beach and check out this view. With incredible rock pools and cliff camping, Greenlee is a huge favourite. There's only nine sites, but it's only $10 a night. There's limited phone service, so just make sure to book online before you head out there. You can get a few bars up on the lookout just past the Southern Car Park, um, but you definitely need to be self-contained here. No problem for us, and although it was a bit windy shaking the van, the water was beautiful. What are you doing there, buddy? Ah, just pulled apart a couple of plugs. Now I'm just scratching the terminals. Got a few mates with you helping, supervising. All these fires now. Yeah. We're back up north days. This is how it's like. It's really bad. I don't know if you can get this view there. The mates just had to re-terminate all these just because I was getting a um, bad connection not getting a right hand signal turn like the indicator it would turn on and then sometimes down the road it would turn off so this was just loose so I had to redo that so then I've just redone all of them just to double check most of them quite loose so it's a bit boring um, that's all we're done now hopefully we'll see how we go yeah check out that view Bad to work with. And a beer. <laughs> Thank you. 
We're not big seafood eaters, so we skipped on through Coffin Bay. If you love your oysters, that's the place to go, but otherwise you can join us in Port Lincoln. These two live in the dream. Just resting. And this is our view over the back. Of a bird, do you think? Wrens, maybe? We headed into town as we had heard there was a cool lookout spot. This tower is the oldest standing structure in Port Lincoln and it was actually built to be a flour mill. Next stop was the Pioneer Cottage Museum. Unfortunately, just our luck, it was closed, so we decided to head down toward the foreshore and grab a takeaway coffee instead. I don't want to get you excited, but uh, we've got some more underwear on the bed. Very excited, I just quickly check them. <laughs> Everywhere we go. It was good to stretch the legs and discover little tracks along the Port Lincoln Marina and Wharf. What's the plan today, Adam? Nothing is a secret. <laughs> Come on, what are you doing? What are you doing? Packing snakes? Packing snakes. Go for a dive. With? In a cage. Oh. Hopefully some great whites. <gasps> dun, dun. <laughs> and we've not told mum. <laughs> Are you ready to dive with some sharks, mate? Oh yeah. You say die or dive? Dive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> dive with some sharks. Yeah. <laughs> There's a cage over there. Do you feel nervous? No, not yet. Just sleepy. Yeah, it's super early. It's 3.30. No, it's not. It's WA time. Anyway. <laughs> Took us about three hours to get to the dive spot. I was lucky enough to get it on a real calm day. I do recommend taking some seasickness tablets just in case you're not as lucky as I was. On the way out to the site, we had a pot of dolphins swimming by the boat. The staff did an awesome job when they were explaining the safety points and made sure that everyone felt comfortable before they entered the cage. Hey guys, sorry about that little scare video at the end. Well, sort of. Um, unfortunately, yesterday I didn't see any uh, great whites when I went and did the dive, which uh, was disappointing, but something you gotta expect with dealing with the wildlife. 
Um, still an awesome experience. Highly recommend doing it. Um, it's been on the bucket list for a long time, so I've kind of sort of ticked it off. Um, they did give me a $300 voucher because there was no so, um, shark sightings. Um, so I can go, come back and that 300 bucks will be taken off the fee. Um, so I'll definitely be coming back at some stage to Port Lincoln and um, jumping in the cage again. But yeah, so hopefully I have better luck next time. Thanks for watching guys. Don't worry, there's still heaps more to explore with us next time when we continue our journey around the Eyre Peninsula.